Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1747, the topic is Mindset, and the title is, How Long Does It Take to Form a New Habit? Hmm, this is a good question. <laughs> uh, I had somebody ask me this, it was one of the participants in our live monthly programming service. They have been wanting to build some extra habits around the training, such as healthy, like eating a healthier breakfast and doing some other odds and ends. And they said that they found themselves starting and stopping, starting and stopping, and just they haven't found traction on it. They feel like a failure, and they're just kind of bumped. <laughs> so they gave me this reference that they had listened to a book, and it said that forming a new habit should take about two weeks. And they said that they've been struggling for about two months and they feel like a total failure and they wonder what's wrong with them. Like, what could they be doing wrong? Uh, and given that I help people with this stuff all the time, could I give them some tips? One tip is it sure as hell does not take just two weeks to form a new habit. That it is an insane process when you're trying to do something new. So the exact comment I, I gave them, uh, well, along with other things, was two weeks, question mark, question mark, bullshit, ha ha. <laughs> so um, it, it, it's some things we can pick up quick. Some things take a long time to reprogram uh, mentally, emotionally, and, and form new physical connections like what we do. Uh, like for example, there was a story I read and I uh, listened to in a book recently where a guy had to give up smoking, but he used to smoke and drink coffee. So he realized, oh man, you know, every time I drink coffee, I get this urge to smoke. I get this craving to smoke. To order, in order to give up smoking, he actually had to give up coffee. I know, insane. Poor, poor man. <laughs> but what he had to do basically was he reworked how he had coffee into his life instead of having coffee at his house. So he used to get up in the morning. He would have a coffee and a cigarette, and he would, like, sit outside or sit. Uh, I don't know what the hell he did. He just he said he sat and just kind of planned out his day and had, like, a thinking time. Well, when he was home and he was sitting with his coffee, if he didn't have a cigarette, it was, like, a huge trigger for him. So what he found out was he got up in the morning, he made a breakfast at home, and then he got coffee on the go. So he would get coffee either, there was like a Starbucks, I guess, on the way to his work, or there was actually this coffee shop at his work. He'd put in a mobile order, and he would just pick up his coffee from the lobby, go up to his desk with the coffee, and drink the coffee at work. And he can't smoke at work. So he had to reposition how he drank coffee because it was connected with him smoking. And that takes time, like figuring all that stuff out, figuring out what your triggers are, reworking your life and like schedule, you know, to get those things built in. That can absolutely take time. So one of the things we struggle with is our expectation of forming a new habit is I decide to do it and then I'm perfect at doing it every day. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that our expectation? You know, we think I've never done this before. I've not done it regularly at all, but I'm just going to decide today that I'm going to do it. And now from today, I'm going to be absolutely perfect with doing it. That sounds stupid and absolutely crazy and like almost like a joke when you hear it out loud. But damned if we don't all think that, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, I know this is good for me. I know I can do it. I'm going to do this and I'm going to be perfect. If I'm not perfect, I'm a loser. I'm a failure. You know, like, oh, I'm a disappointment to the world. <laughs> we set up this insane and toxic narrative in our mind. Uh, so the reality of forming a new habit is we think about it. We often get distracted. <laughs> then we come back to thinking about it, but we think about what the benefits of doing it would be. Then we get distracted again. And then we come back to thinking about it, and this time now we're thinking like, oh, okay, well, well, what would I have to do? What, what would it take for me to be able to do it? What do I need to do to do it? What do I need to stop doing to do it? Then we start to feel overwhelmed. Then we consider whether we should or shouldn't try because what if I fail? And then, okay, we decide, well, maybe we'll try it. It goes well for a day or a week. But then we miss a day. We tell ourselves we're a failure, and then we quit. That's typically kind of, you know, rough uh, 
estimate of how it goes. <laughs> you know, we think about it for a while, we get distracted for a while, we think about it for a while, we get overwhelmed for a while, and then we try it, we miss a day or two, or we mess up something, we feel like we lose, we're, we, you know, we failed, and then we just kind of give up. That stinks, <laughs> you know? So we want to talk about how do we avoid that. Well, we want to kind of ask ourselves, or kind of think through right now, we can think through a series of questions. The one question is, what habit do I want to start? So what is the habit you want to start? Do you want to start eating a better breakfast? Do you want to start eating a better lunch? Do you want to start eating something during the day so you're not eating everything at night? Do you want to stop eating as much at night? Do you want to start training? Do you want to start exercising? What do you What do you want to start? Okay. We want to get that in our head and kind of define. Okay, I want to, I want to start training, you know, exercising at least two days a week. Or I want to start eating better protein like my protein has been kind of hit and miss i i know i'm supposed to get like 160 grams a day some days I only get like 100 so i want to get my protein more consistent so whatever it is we have to decide what we want to do right that's the new habit next question to consider is what will i have to add to my life to make it happen if you want to add exercise you have to add the time that it takes to exercise Maybe that's, you know, driving to the gym. If you go to a gym, maybe that's taking time to just exercise at home. Maybe you have to add equipment. Maybe you have to buy some equipment to actually be able to train at home. Or you have to add an expense of a gym membership. Like, we have to think through what we have to add to make it happen. But then, we want to think, what do I have to delete from my life to make it happen? This is a question that people often don't ask. They get the first two. What do I want to do? And then what do I have to do to do it? <laughs> we also have to consider what do I have to stop doing to do it? I'm reading through a book by Harry Kramer. And it is uh, last name is spelled K-R-A-E-M-E-R. So Harry Kramer. The book is titled Your 168. I'm listening to this. Uh, Meredith actually got in. My wife got into Kellogg for uh, MBA freaking badass <laughs> uh, top five school in the nation super excited for her harry kramer is one of the teachers at kellogg and this book was recommended for meredith and i liked it so I, like uh, the concept of one your 168 is you have 168 hours in a week so the subtitle to the book is finding purpose and satisfaction in a values-based life who the hell doesn't want to read that that'd be like Please tell me everything you know <laughs> so I can make my life better. You know, of course I want to listen to that book, and of course I want to read that. So I've been focusing on that, I've been listening to that book, and I really like it. And the one concept that the book hammers home with the title even, your 168, is you only have 168 hours in a week. Some of that you better be sleeping. <laughs> so we have a lot less actually than 168 because we have to sleep some of that. What that means is if I want to add the time of exercise, if I want to add the time of eating an extra meal, if I want to add, I have to delete. I have to reorganize. I have to replace. I have to do something else with what's already in my time. We want to consider that part of the process. Because if we just continue to try to add, 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 you're going to realize that you're going to fail. You're either going to fail at something that you thought you were already going to be able to maintain as you add in a new thing, or you're going to fail at the new thing. Something's going to fall off. At, like, something's going to fall out of your 168 if you just continue to add, 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 and you add past 168, right? So we know the phrase, like, you only have 24 hours in a day. Uh, that's true. <laughs> you know, if we think about that expanded to a week is 168. We do only have a finite amount of time. And we have to decide, okay, out of the time that I have, what of all the things that I want to do with my time, what has the most significant impact on the quality of my life and the quality of the life of those around me? Self-care is absolutely invaluable to the quality of your life and the quality of the life of those around you. Absolutely. If you put yourself last, if you treat yourself like shit, 
You don't eat right. You don't sleep right. You never exercise. You put everybody else's needs above yours. You're going to have an internal dialogue that is absolutely trash. It's going to be crap. You're going to hate your life, at least on the inside. Maybe people aren't going to see it on the outside. But you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be angry. You're going to feel like a martyr 24-7. You are not going to enjoy your life if you always put yourself last. Now, if you always put yourself first to the detriment of everyone else in all of your relationships, to the detriment of money, yeah, you're going to hate your life too. Everybody's going to hate you because you're probably going to be an (laughs) a-hole. So there's a balance to this. But overwhelmingly, most people do not prioritize their self-care high enough. I've gone through waves of that in my own life. It just happens. You know, we try to please everyone else or we try to, you know, I, like with business, I tried to pay off bills when I first opened the gym. Uh, I tried to reach more people, help more people. Struggled with feeling selfish if I were to cancel clients in order for me to train. That was one of the biggest, like, hardest decisions I had. Uh, when I was really trying to grow the gym, I had clients from 7 in the morning till noon and then 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. So I was training roughly about like 10 to 12 hours a day, face-to-face, full-on, all day. I was then training an extra five to six hours on Saturday, and I had more people wanting to come in Saturdays. I had people ask me to come in on Sundays, and I was just like, I have nothing left. I'm falling asleep standing up while I'm trying to cook food at night. I am just exhausted. My body feels like crap. I had plantar fasciitis from standing all day. I felt miserable. I lost 30 pounds in the first 30 days of owning the gym. I was up on my feet so much, moving plates around, doing things. I was absolutely losing the quality of my life. One of the hardest decisions I had to make was to say no to clients so I could say yes to myself. Absolutely challenging, insanely challenging. And part of that also meant that I had to charge who I still trained more because I I needed to make the money up from what I was going to not do with clients. I had to prioritize myself more which meant I had to tell some people no, and I had to charge everyone else more money. Good God. That felt very selfish. That I questioned that decision a lot. It was a big, big challenge to my decision. But I had to do it. There was no way I was going to continue to run the business. There was no way I was going to continue to run my life as it was. If I would have tried to push that further and further and further... I would have broke down. Maybe I wouldn't have, maybe I would have got a big injury. Maybe I would have had to close the gym down because I had a panic attack and just couldn't handle things. There were going to be bigger consequences that would be more harmful to others and myself if I didn't prioritize myself. So that's very challenging. It, it is very hard to think through what you have to delete from your life in order to add things. But that is a process we need to think through. So the things we want to consider is what habit do I want to start? What do I have to add to my life to make that happen? But also what do I have to delete from my life to make that happen? Next question is, how often do I need to do it to see progress? How often do I expect it to happen? Do I think I'm going to be able to do this every single day? Is that realistic? If I don't do it seven out of seven days, am I going to quit? What if I only do it six out of seven, five out of seven, four out of seven, three out of seven? What if I only do it one day this week? What if I only do it one day in the next two weeks? What is the frequency that I need to at least see something? To to make it feel like I'm making progress from where I've been. Right? What is your expectation of adherence? Then we have to say, what's my plan A? for making it happen what's my plan b for when plan a doesn't happen (laughs) you know so how often do i want it to happen how how am i going to make it happen how am i going to make it happen if the way i thought it was going to happen doesn't happen that's the process we have to go through when we want to start a new habit we have to think what will i have to add to my life to make it happen what will i have to delete from my life to make it happen how often do i need it to happen to see progress One of the best pieces of advice when it comes to starting a new habit is to recognize that sometimes is better than no times. Anything done poorly is better than anything done not at all. 
even if you do a horrible job, a horrible job is better than no job. It is better to do something than nothing. You can make progress from the culmination of some things. You cannot make progress from nothing. So, in the process of forming a new habit, how long does it take? It takes time. And if we have the wrong expectation, meaning like we think it's going to be, I have to be perfect at it, it, you'll never get there. You're never going to be perfect with anything. You're probably not even perfect with brushing your teeth. <laughs> you know, like some of the most basic things in our life, we still miss a day here or there, right? Maybe you get super tired one night, you fall asleep on the couch, you get up, you pee, you go to bed, and you're like, oh crap, I forgot to brush my teeth, I'll just do it in the morning, right? We forget even the most basic things sometimes. So I'm not going to start this new habit and expect it to be perfect, because there's no way in hell I'm going to be perfect with anything in life. I just want to be better than I've been before. If I'm better than I've been before... I'm making progress. And that's the goal. Okay. So when you start a new habit, think about what you have to add. Think about where you're going to add it, which means you have to delete or rearrange some things in your life. And then make sure you have proper expectations. You're aiming for progress, not perfection. And that whole process is going to be a lifelong event. You're never done adding a new habit. It's just part of your life. It's part of what you manage every day. It's just an ongoing process of being our best self. So there is no timeline when it comes to starting a new habit. You're just going to manage it as best as you can every day for the rest of your life. That's it. Just like we do with everything else. You're never done. You're never going to be perfect. You're just trying to do it more than you've done it before, or you're trying to at least maintain a decent amount that makes you allows you to see progress. Okay. If you struggle with anything, if you have any questions, reach out. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. We have our one-on-one -on -one coaching service. I can always help you kind of form new habits, learn where to add them, learn, you know, all that process if you need some help. Uh, hopefully today's podcast gets you thinking and gets you at least started being motivated, knowing that you don't have to be perfect. You just have to get it going. If you have any questions, need anything, reach out. My email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support the podcast which you can do on our website. And if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and on YouTube under the name Brutal Iron Gym. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.